This is the video introduction to Activity 3.5 Inequalities. In this activity, we'll learn to use graphing and algebra to find solutions to function inequality statements. We'll learn to explain the rule when you multiply or divide by a negative number, you switch the inequality sign. And we'll learn to solve inequalities involving linear and quadratic terms and connect these solutions to corresponding function graphs. We'll use a graphing calculator with this activity. What is a function inequality? You'll be asked questions about where two functions are equal, a familiar concept, as well as where one function is less than or greater than another function. Statements about function inequalities are based on the corresponding function output values and are easy to see on a graph. A function f of x is less than a function g of x on an interval if f of x is less than g of x for every x in that interval. There we're looking at the output values. The f of x output value is less than g, the g of x output value for every x. Visually, f of x is less than g of x when the graph of f of x is below the graph of g of x. Similar inequalities and comparisons can be written for less than or equal to, greater than, or greater than or equal to. Solutions to function inequality statements can be given as x value inequality or interval statements as are and are illustrated in the following examples. See activity 3.1 for a review of those concepts. In our first example, we have two linear functions, L of x and M of x. They intersect when x equals two, which we solve for algebraically. And when we plug x equals two into the functions, we see the output is one, so the point of intersection is two, one. When we look at this all together, we say that the graph of L of x intersects or is at the graph of M of x. Symbolically, we use an equal sign between our two functions, and our solution is the x value, x equals 2, this single point where the graphs intersect. Where is L of x less than or equal to M of x? In words, we say the graph of L of x is at or below the graph of M of x. Symbolically, we use the less than or equal to symbol, and our solutions are x greater than or equal to 2, that's an inequality, or we use the interval 2 to infinity, including 2. When we look at the graph, we have a number line representation x greater than or equal to 2 marked on the x-axis. And this gray band shows where the graph of L of x is at or below the graph of M of x. When we look at greater than or equal to, the situation is flipped. We say the graph of L of x is at or above the graph of M of x. And that's to the left of 2, so x less than or equal to 2. For our second example, we have two quadratic functions. They're equal at x equals plus or minus 2, and the two points of intersection are negative 2, 2, and 2, 2. When we look at where they're equal, we see the two points where the two quadratic functions cross. So x equals plus or minus 2. Where is f of x less than g of x? This is where the graph of f of x is below the graph of g of x. So in this case, g of x is the concave up parabola, and f of x is the concave down parabola. So the graph of f is below the graph of g, to the left of negative 2 and to the right of positive 2, which we've marked with the number line and the gray bands. Notice that we don't include the points here because we have a less than sign, not a less than or equal to sign. 
Similarly, we can see where f is greater than g, and that in between negative 2 and 2. So our inequality here is negative 2 is less than x is less than 2, and our interval is negative 2 to 2 without including the negative 2 and 2. In contrast, previously we had x less than negative 2 or x greater than 2. That was our inequality. And our interval is negative infinity to 2, not to negative 2, not including the negative 2, union 2 to infinity. We use the union symbol for the interval notation. What are our x value options? Notice in example 1, when we were looking at less than or equal to and greater than or equal to, we used those inner inequality symbols and closed brackets. In example 2, for less than, we use less than and greater than symbols and open brackets. Other notation tips are to remember that the numbers in the interval and the inequality must always be in numerical order. For example, negative infinity is less than x is less than 3, or 3 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 10. The numbers have to be in numerical order from the number line, from left to right. And of course, you can never reach or be equal to plus or minus infinity. So as a result, for interval notation, all the brackets by plus or minus infinity must be open brackets, even if the other numbers are not. So for example, negative infinity to positive 3, including positive 3. The 3 has a closed bracket, but the negative infinity has an open bracket. All brackets by positive and negative infinity must be open. 